Hey, Shalom, Ram. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the rule well. And blessings to the hopeful elect out there teaching this word in all sincerity and truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And um, I just come back at you with another video. Um, and pretty much just wanted to land back off the spirit. That's um, of, a, of a heavy exhortation right now um, in Israel, starting with Elder Apostle Tahar and down, you know, um, you know, speaking about how we're supposed to be on fire for the truth. Okay. And, um, and you know, you know, I definitely agree with that, uh, especially as we see the day of the Lord approaching, you know, we're supposed to, um, you know, the scriptures speak about having done all to stand. All right. The scriptures also say the righteous shall scarcely be saved. So, you know, even after we've um, done all the things that the Lord has commanded us to do, you know, the scriptures still say that the righteous is going to scarcely be saved. So this is about fear in the Lord. You know, this ain't, this ain't about winging it in the truth. This ain't about, you know, getting complacent and thinking that you got it. You know, everything, everything's carved out perfect. No, we're going to have like, um, you know, the scriptures speak about through much tribulation. All right. Uh, let me get that in Acts 14 and 22. All right. And, and speaking of the spirit of exhortation. I think this scripture is fitting right here. This is Acts chapter 14, verse 22. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples, which the word disciple goes back to what? Discipline. So we're supposed to be disciplined, especially in these last days. The scriptures say that, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And that takes discipline. All right. And that holy conversation goes into what? Your conduct as well, which means to be disciplined as well within your conduct. All right. How our conduct has to be pretty much, you know, how we conduct ourselves, you know, what we do, you know, it, it, it falls back on this truth, man, because we're, we're ambassadors of Yahweh Shai, you know, we're the Lord's messengers. So whatever we do, we're representing Yahweh Shai on the earth. So we can't be fucking, you know, bullshitting. All right. We can't be playing games. We can't be playing around. OK. If we say that we're the Lord's messengers, that we're his prophets, his mouthpieces, we have to go out there. We have to be. True representatives of that Alright And it takes discipline In order to do that as well And the scripture says And exhorting them To continue in the faith So we gotta exhort one another Alright The word exhorting Let's go into that word exhorting And see what comes up here Okay It says And exhorting them Alright Parakaleo Alright It's a to call to one side To call for a summon Alright Um now we've been called Now we just hope that we're, we've been chosen The scripture says many are called But only few are chosen man You know And when you think about that scripture You don't want to be You don't want to be the um, Just of the called You want to be of the chosen Alright We've been called for We've been summoned to do, a, to do a job To do a duty right It says to address To speak to we, We've been called to speak Okay Alright It says That which may be done In a way of exhortation Entreaty, comfort, all right, to exhort one another. The word exhort, it says an address or communication em uh, emphatically, urging someone to do something, urging someone to do something. What does it mean biblically? The term exhort exhortation is usually interpreted as pure advising, all right? And what are we advising, you know, the lambs to do? To stay on fire. What are we advising our people to do? To stay on fire, you know, and to be truly woke. Because you've got Jake out here talking about how woke they are. The scriptures speak about that therefore knowing the time that now it's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. But, you know, the wicked of our people, you know, they think they're woke, but they're really asleep. Okay. The walking dead. The scriptures speak about the man that wonder if out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So they're really the walking dead, man. It says, however, the meaning of exhortation extends beyond that. Let's look at several translations in the Greek. The term exhortation is called parakaleo, comforter. A similar word with the Holy Spirit, a comforter. And there's a spirit that comes with this word. Okay. There's an actual spirit all right, that, that, you know, that comes with this word, the comforter. Okay. So let's go back into... Um, let's go back into the defini definition of exhortation. Parakaleo, it says... Done in by way of exhortation, entreaty, comfort, instruction. 
Okay. And the scripture speak about that um, instruction. Uh, uh, what was that bind instruction? Let me see if I can get that scripture as well. Uh, instruction. Is it bind instruction? Just bear with me. This is a good one. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay. But that's not the one I wanted. But that's, that's, and, and, and a lot of guys don't fear the Lord. They don't fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Remember, just quoting the scripture earlier, um, uh, the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Okay, that's the fear of the Lord. The scriptures speak about being, being fully persuaded in our own mind, man. All right, the scripture also says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, do we persuade men? Okay. Oh, this is a real good one here. Proverbs 4 and 13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. You see that? So this, and why does it say she? Because wisdom is like a fem feminine spirit. Okay, the Greek word for wisdom is Sophia. Okay, that's where you get the word philosophy from, which means the word philo meaning lover of and Sophia meaning Greek, uh, uh, which meaning a uh, uh, wisdom, lover of wisdom. All right. You studying uh, uh, philosophy, really, you, you know, you're seeking after wisdom, you know, the lover of wisdom, you know, because that's what the word philosophy means. All right. Again, it says take Proverbs 4 and 13, take fast hold of instruction and let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. So this really these scriptures are our life. That's why Yahweh Shai said, I am, not, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Okay, this word is life. Okay, let's get a scripture on that. John 6 and 63. Okay, these words are life, man. Anything outside of this word is really death. It's really vanity, it's pride, it's, it's, it's death. Okay, John chapter 6 verse 63 it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. All right. So these words are life, man. These in these words of instruction represent life. And this is why you see nothing but death on the earth today, because Esau cast the words of instruction behind him. That's in Psalms 15 and 16. But unto the wicked, the most I saith. Let's get that scripture. All right. This is why you got the vibration of death on the earth, because this devil, he doesn't deal with the instructions of the Lord. Psalms chapter 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked, which is Esau, Edom, Malachi 1 and 4, okay, the, the, uh, starting with the elite banking families, all right, the so-called white man, the devil, okay, which they, they, they're trying to set up their new world order. They want people out here to be chipped. They want to play the Most High. That's the wicked that the, the Most High is speaking against. Right? It says, what has thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction. So this devil is, he's been created and set up the polar opposite to, 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 um, to take heed to instruction. No, he's been set up to go against it. He hates instruction. And cast this my words behind you. So if you're casting instruction on the words of the most side behind you, what are you really promoting? You're really promoting death. You ain't promoting life. Okay, because these words are spirit and they are what? Life. The words that I speak unto you back in John 6 and 63, it is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. And these devils, they push nothing but lust of the flesh out here, man. That's why you got alphabet people doing cartwheels in the street. Okay? That's why you got to look over your shoulder like, you know, there's constant, de like, pe demons are on these people out here, man. Okay? You constantly got to, you, you know, you, you got to be in fear for your life, you know? It's good to speak about America being the valley of the shadow of death. That's Babylon the Great right there. And a valley means a low land. All right? People just out here living for the flesh. And all these other nations, they, they've, they've drunk of that wine, man. That's why the scripture says in Jeremiah 51 and 7, the nations have drunk of that wine and therefore the nations are mad. Okay? Because that whole, that intoxication, these nations are inebriated with the wine and the filth of Babylon, man. Okay? Promoting the ways of the flesh. Okay, which, which represents death, not life. Now let's go into that word quickeneth real quick. So we're supposed to be quickened, man. All right, this, this truth, this, these words quicken us. All right, zupoeo in the Greek, it says to produce alive. Begat or bear living young, to cause to live, to make alive, to give life. This word is, it gives us life. That's why I quoted earlier. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. If you're void of understanding, then you're really dead. 
Okay? It is by spiritual power to arouse and invigorate. Let's look up that word invigorate. So this word is supposed to invigorate us, man. It says to give strength or energy to. Now, yeah, we're going through things. As we, you know, because the scripture says in Sirach 2 and 1, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. We understand that. But at the same time, this word is supposed to invigorate us, give us strength to deal with whatever we're dealing with, man. Because we got the energy to deal with it. Because the Lord is giving it, he's propping us up. He's giving us the energy to get through. How many times we've gone through hurdles in this truth, man? Whether it be big problems, minor problems, the Lord gets you through them, all right? And it, 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 because you've been invigorated by this word, you applied the word, the wisdom of the word. You understand what it means to be in this truth and to serve the Lord, all right? And that you are going to catch hell. And then when you come out the other side, it strengthens you even more. That's that true invig uh, to be invigorated, man, to be in truly invigorated. And the scripture says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. All right. So this word invigorate is to give strength or energy to. So we're supposed to have energy, man, abundant energy because we got the life. We got the words of life. By spiritual power to arouse and invigorate, to restore life, to increase of life. Look at that, man. Thus, of physical life. Through this wisdom, man, you apply uh, the Daniel uh, Daniel diet. You apply wisdom on what to, you know, what foods to eat. All right, how to pray, how to get by from day to day, how to fight against this, these spirits, how to fight the spiritual war that we're dealing with, man. You know, that increases your life. Okay, this is of the spirit quickening as respects as respects the spirit endued with new and greater powers of life, man. Oh my goodness Greater powers of life That's what we have Arkim So we can't take this lightly man Alright Now if we've got this uh, um, um, Invigorating If we've got this strength What are we supposed to do with it? Just you know Keep it to ourselves? No We've got to use the strength That we've been given Let me get, read the last part It says Of seeds quickened into life Germinating Springing up And growing man Hey The Lord Hey uh, desire the sincere milk of the word Let me get that scripture Where is it um, Second Peter Is it 2 Or oh, First Peter I ain't got this one in a long time uh, Oh this is a good one <laughs> Oh my goodness Damn Second uh, First Peter chapter 2 verse 5 Ye also as lively stones I didn't see, I didn't even mean to get that scripture, man, but that's how the spirit, that's how the spirit works, Arkim, you know? Come on, man, you can't make this up. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. The spiritual house is being built right now, man. Okay? And the Lord requires that everyone get down, you know, and get, you know, pretty much and pitch in to build, help build that spiritual house, the tabernacle of David. All right? Because in the end of the deal, we're going to get paid for what we've done, man. Okay, we've been given the strength, all right, and the tools to be able to get down and build, okay? One's, I don't know, one's fitting the windows, one's laying the flooring, okay? One's doing the wall plastering, one's, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? The little tasks, one's working on the garden, one's, the house, and then in the end, the house just gets built up, and it's just dope, you know? This is the Lord's house, man, okay? His spiritual house is being raised in these last days, it says... Lively stones at that. We're lively stones, man. Are built up as spiritual house, a and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh and by Yahweh Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So these are these spiritual sacrifices that we're offering up to the Lord, man. As we grow in the spirit, a hey, we a hey, the Lord demands that pound of flesh. We got a sacrifice in the flesh in order to grow in the spirit. Okay. And that's why the scriptures speak about that in Romans chapter 12, man. About not being conformed to this world. About a living, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. Let's get Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Most High Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. Okay. So we've got to present our bodies as living sacrifice, man. That's acceptable to the Lord. Giving up our time, giving up our energy, giving up. But you know what, man? Whatever we have, we've been given by the Lord. Okay? So anything that we do have, we, we thank Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai regardless. All right? Whether, 
hey, the most I have given, the most I have taken away, right? We have to have that mindset as well. Whatever we have, the law can take it away at any moment. So we're really at the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's why we can't get complacent and proud and thinking that whatever we have, this is just it. We can just sit up, you know, just kick up our feet and chill in Babylon. No, bro. The Lord wants to see us work, man. And it's the spirit because as I said that, a, 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 screen, a screenshot of a waterfall just came on my Google Chrome, man. All right. And that, you know, that reminds me of um, John 7 and 38. Okay. Lively stone. We're supposed to be lively, man. All right. It's a John chapter 7 and 38. It says, he that believeth on me. As the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay? Which that belly is talking about your mind. All right? Because when you go into that word belly, I believe it's koil, uh, koilia, which means the seat of your thoughts, which is your mind. Okay? And that living water is like a waterfall, you know, gushing out like lively, man. Not like a, a murky ass lake, you know, just with, with, with Coke cans floating at the top of it. You know, with with a with a empty condom wrapper just floating, and some some algae, man. Okay, no, we're like lively stones, man. All right, constantly moving, constantly, you know, constantly strengthened, active, in the truth, man. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Romans twelve and two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind. And you can't transform if you're just stuck in one spot, man. No, we're supposed to be growing, right? So we've got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay? And the more and more we cling onto this word, man, and the more, you know, we drink of the fountain of living waters, because that's what Yahweh Shai told the woman, the heathen Samaritan woman at the well, which was a heathen, all right? He said, if any man drink of the water that I shall give him, it shall be within him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's how we're getting, you know, transformed by the renewing of our minds, man. The outward man perisheth, the inward man being renewed day by day, right? It says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. So this is the will of the Lord. All right? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? That's why we don't get caught up and entangled with the affairs of this life. Now, there's one, there's another scripture that I wanted to get. Um, damn, where is it, man? Uh, let me just type in grow Grow there by Oh, 2 Peter 2 and 2 Right, it says And as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word That ye may grow thereby Alright, so we are, are commanded to grow man Okay Let's look at that word grow That ye may grow Alright Uaksano um, Uaksano it says to cause, to grow, to augment, to increase. All right. Let's look up that word augment. Okay. You got the word augmentation or augment. It says to make something greater by adding to it, to increase. Now you got, hey, you got the wicked of our people. They're going to receive augmentation from Esau, right? On the left-hand side. They're going to think, they're going to think that it's an increase for them on the left-hand side because it's going to allow them to be able to eat, buy and sell, go from one place to another. Okay. They're going to receive that from these augmentations from East. They're going to get augged up by Esau. And that's going to come by way of the chip. But you see, we're being augmented on the right-hand side through the Spirit. Because the Lord is adding, on, adding to us, all right? Making us greater through this word, through the understanding. Okay? It says to increase. The scripture says the Most High giveth the increase. Okay? It says a vowel prefix um, to past tenses of verb in Greek. Verbs in Greek and certain other Indo-European languages. That's pretty much it on that. The word augment. So let's go back to the blue letter. It says to increase. Okay. To become greater. To grow. Increase. So the Lord re requires that we increase in the spirit of plants. Okay. Uh, the, the scripture spoke about that seed. Of planting a seed. Okay. We just went into that. Um, in the Greek word. For quicken, zoop oil, of planting of a seed. We're like a, 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 a seed that's going to sprout into a plant, man. Like the Lord said, if, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. In fact, let's get that scripture, man. So you see, these scriptures, okay, um, they, may, they may seem on a, on a, oh, yeah, yeah, you just read over these scriptures. But listen, when you go precept upon precept, line upon line, this is that living water, bro. The Lord, like, he hasn't given us this, this, this stagnant, 
like a, a, a feeling of being stagnant, man. He, he requires that we flow in the spirit, man, and that we grow. All right, the scripture says through thy precepts we get understanding, man. And I pray this is edifying. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. And another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of a mustard seed, which a man took and sold it in his field, which is indeed the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. You see that, man? So don't, hey, don't worry about like, you know, what these people are doing in the world. And uh, the thing is, man, we got to keep our eyes single, man. Even if it seems like your faith isn't a, a, as strong as somebody else's or what. Hey, pray to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. You stay in the fight. You fight the good fight of faith, man. All right. The Lord spoke about a grain of a mustard seed, man. All right. And it's the most high that gives the increase. So just trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and ask him. All right. The scripture speak about um, uh, which of you will ask the heavenly father for bread and he, and he will give you a stone. Um... Let me see if I can get that scripture. Um, give you a stone. I want to get this scripture, man. I really do want to get this scripture. Oh, this is the one. Matthew chapter 7. Hey, the Wadi Yahweh man. Matthew chapter 7, verse... Um, let me start from 7. All right, it says, ask and it shall be given you. You see that? That's hey, right there, straight off the bat, Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given, man. Okay, if any man lack wisdom, all right, didn't the scripture speak about it? Let's hold that scripture as well. Lack wisdom. All right. Yeah, let's, let's go to this one first. We can jump back to Matthew 7 and 7. Right, this is James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High Yahweh. And, uh, that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Remember, we spoke about that faith as a grain as a mustard seed. Asking in faith. Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Okay? For let not man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, man. And this is what I'm saying. So you got to come to the Lord sincerely, you know. You really sincerely, you really about this. That's why no one out here, can, you know, it's futile to really act the part. Okay? The scripture says, Cursed be he that doeth the, the, the work of the Most High deceitfully. Okay? So um, let's go back to Matthew 7 and 7. It says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that, that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what, or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, he will, give, will he give him a serpent? If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts, gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him. If you lack in strength, hey, ask you how about Shem was shy, man. A faith as a grain as a mustard seed. If us being evil, we know how to give our children good things. Then how much more so you how about Shem was shy, man? Okay, so we gotta have faith. Have faith, Akim. You know, and the Lord, hey, no matter what we we get, man, what we're receiving in this flesh, we deserve every bit of it. We have to adopt the mindset of Micah seven and nine. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Okay? So let's go back to... Um, oh, what was it? We read that one. Yeah, back in 2 Peter 2 and, and 2. And as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. So this is about growing, man. It's about the growth. All right? And we did um, put up that word, that, you know, uaksano, to grow, man, or to get, to get increased. All right, to cause to grow of plants, of infants, um, the inward man. All right, in fact, let me get that scripture day by day. If I put in renewed, if I put in, in, in renewed day, it will come up. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. For which cause we faint not, all right, 
Uh, but fruit, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Okay, so this is like a process, like a day by day. Uh, we're being renewed in the spirit. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us. So this is just a light affliction, man. And ultimately, man, the scriptures speak about that when we're in the kingdom, we're going to be like them that dream. Okay, this is just the fashion of this world passeth away. This is just, we're right at the end. Okay, this is just a not too much longer to go. You see how Esau is ramping things up. This, the devil coming down, having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. They're about to reimpose lockdowns on people out here. Okay, uh, uh, remember that what they were doing, uh, uh, rationing food. You know, you can only buy a certain amount of product per person. They had people on, under house arrest in lockdown, and they can ramp it up this time to the point where they just push out the like MOTB. All right, but even that we're being at the end, remember, this is just a light affliction. All right, and if we are at the end, and we are, and we can see that we're at the end as we're measuring the time, we see the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes in diverse places. Okay, the pestilences. We're seeing these things happen. We know that we're at the end. So now's not the time to, to loosen up. Now's the time to tighten up, man. You know, and just understanding that this is a light affliction. Okay, it says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more and exceeding an eternal weight of glory. And this is why I want to get this scripture. And this is what I'm saying. We're going to be, we're going to be immortal, man. We're going to be living forever. And our works do follow us, man. Imagine that. Okay. And the apostles were saying at the main camp, they were saying, look, guys don't even know what they're even, you know, doing this work for. They don't even know what they're going to receive. You know, this is Hebrews chapter six and ten. For the Most High Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which he have showed towards his name, which shows you that the name is important. OK, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. The word minister means to serve the saints are who the Israelites. Okay, Psalms 50 and 5, Psalms 148 and 14 goes into who the saints are. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That's why the apostle Peter, what did he say? First Peter chapter 1 uh, verse, um, uh, or Second Peter 1 and 10. I was getting mixed up with first and second Peter. It says, wherefore the rather brethren... Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. The Lord told us what to do, man. This is the instruction. To give diligence to make our calling and election sure. If we do these things, we're never going to fall, man. Many are called, but few are chosen. The chosen are going to be diligent. The chosen are going to be diligent to the end. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Those that have been called and not chosen, they're going to fizzle out. They don't fear the Lord. Okay, and that's a terrible thing, man. And hey, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You lost, you, you lack faith. You didn't pray. All right, and ultimately, it's because you weren't of the elect, you know. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And you don't want the Lord to have no pleasure in you when he comes back, man. Because if, if the Lord is looking at you like, look, move from me. I never knew you. That's, hey, you're going to be taken out by the Lord. Okay, is it not written in Luke 19 and 27, those that would not which my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So the Lord is going to be doing a lot of killing of our own people when he comes back. All right, it says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. Them that believe. This is about belief, man. This is about faith in this word. This is about being strengthened by this word, being invigorated, being augmented in the spirit through the understanding of this word. Drinking of this living water, man, quickeneth, man, the spirit that quickeneth. Now, I'm just kind of reeling off the journey that we've just gone through, this short journey that we've just gone through here in this lesson, man. OK, these precepts going into that, we got to exhort one another daily with this, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because we don't want to be drawing back onto perdition. The word be the word perdition means destruction. Alright? But we're of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. Lord willing, man. Alright? Verse 39 in the NOT. But we are but we are not like those who turn away from the Most High to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Will be saved. 
The elect will be saved, man. Who's Yahweh Shai coming back to gather? The elect. Those that believe. The chosen ones. All right? So I, I pray this was edifying, Arkim, you know? Like, um, I kind of had different precepts, like, you know, lined up that I wanted to go into, but the spirit done took it away, man. So it is what it is, you know? But Lord willing, I hope this is a, a lively, exhortational video, all right? And that you were sincerely fed through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man, as we come towards the end and be even more further augmented on the right-hand side, increased, added onto, and grow in the spirit and knowledge and wisdom, man, that we may endure unto the end. As the scripture says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, man, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Keep fearing Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. The scriptures speak about let no man take thy crown. So with that, man, I pray you were edified. Shalom to the elect.